This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now in Chiang Mai, and today I'm gonna do a rain test of this Porsche from Temu. I'm just kidding. This is Aura 07, also known as Aura Grand Cat. And it has run 80 kilowatt hour, it's all wheel drive with the performance version. So, how thirsty is it? Can it match Tesla Model 3? Well, let's find out. It's a Chinese car, so it's gonna be a bit troublesome to try to measure the consumption and everything. But I'll do my best. So, yeah, it's a nice looking car at least. It's a sedan. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It actually has an active spoiler. Huh? And all the windows have been tinted. That's how they roll in Thailand. So uh, I can show you a weird thing. The button for opening the trunk. Well, okay, for, you see the tr how the trunk open. Yeah, that, that is weird. I've never seen a car open the trunk like that before. The button for opening the trunk is the same as the button for closing the trunk. And then the lights here. That's the light for the uh, license plate. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go, and then close it. Oh yeah. So it's an interesting looking car, right? Nothing like anything I've seen before. At least not from the east. Yeah. Okay, and then inside. Voila. How oh, do you like that? Huh? Huh? Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, you guys remember Aura Good Cat? It was popular uh, a few years ago. But uh, now it's not that popular. Same with this car. So, just want to know how good it is, right? Yeah, all right, anyway. So here we have car scanner. Uh, it reports almost 90%. The battery is cold-ish, yeah, at least for Thailand. 30, 38 degrees Celsius. I couldn't find more variables here that made any sense. Uh, so we just have all these, but at least the state of charge here seems to be accurate, 89.9. So we can use that as a measurement. And then uh, distance here, a more accurate distance number. I'm not sure about here, if I do this. Uh, we can also see on this side. Yeah, I'll show you what the challenge is that... Um, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't bug me. <coughs> so I just woke up, I had a long nap there. Have some distance there. Uh, speed, okay, that's time, not too interesting. Um, but here, this is just a rolling average. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I was like flu, oh, some, uh, man flu. It's a rolling average. It doesn't say how many kilometers even, but I guess it could be 100 kilometers. So if you go here, there is a power here. Uh, that shows some variables, the same, pretty much. Yeah, so um, we're gonna do a loop now. <coughs> oh, I don't have a map. Okay, I can show it here. here. We're gonna do that loop. Wait for it. Uh, sending data to China. Okay, let me see. Which uh, alignment is this? Is it uh, north up or something? They're not up there. So, okay, you see, we are near Chiang Mai. So, we're gonna drive a 33.8 kilometer loop that I normally do, which involves going south a bit, going north, and then come back here. We're gonna do that three times, and that's a little bit over 100 kilometer. So that should be close enough to try to measure what the heck this is. All right, we're on the move. So we're gonna do the 120 test first. We go at 123 on the speedo, that's 120 GPS. I have to be careful now, because uh, if I don't pay it too much attention, well, actually, it, it doesn't matter, really. Uh, the car will suddenly decide to disengage uh, autopilot or auto steer and then penalize me and not allow me to do that again. <laughs> it, it, it tries to be safe by looking at my eyes, uh, but uh, it fails many times to understand what's going on and it, uh, you know, disengages it. Or, or shut it down per, well, permanently, sorry, semi-permanently, until I put the car in park. But even if I'm looking at the road, like I tend to do many times, it still happens. 
But okay, anyway, yeah, uh, we're gonna turn around soon. I'm paying attention here. Uh, and that will be the first part of the loop. What the heck? Just as I said it, now we cannot use auto steer. It disengaged uh, with one second warning and then it's gone. I, I, I was looking at the road all the time, I, seriously. I was gonna uh, complain about how bad it was because uh, when it go into curves like this, it's not smooth. It was just jig, 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 jig. I'm just exa exaggerating it. But it cannot turn smoothly. Sometimes it goes a little bit too much to the side here a bit, you know. It, it, it doesn't stay centered in the lane. And also the cruise control, when you go up and down hill, it doesn't go smooth. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's slowing down harsh ish, like just like other uh, Chinese cars. So, and also it seems like we have a little fogging problem here. Um, over here it's a bit cold, 21 degrees Celsius at night. And I set the cabin temperature to 24.5 because I want it nice and warm. And you know, Chinese cars are like this. Uh, if you set it to 21 degrees Celsius, like in a Tesla, it's going to be cold in here. But the car seems to uh, not be able to defog properly. So uh, this is uh, actually not uh, that good. Well, the first loop is complete. Uh, consumption has gone up to 209 watt hour per kilometer. Now two more loops. Uh, you see that I'm running normal mode now. Uh, if I use eco mode, let's see, well, that's well be, there's other modes. Eco mode, uh, you will see that it also runs all-wheel drive permanently. So it doesn't disengage the motor. Seems like, uh, okay, I haven't checked the spec, but I'm guessing that there are two PM motors and they have to be uh, constantly running. So, uh, yeah, uh, the problem in eco mode is that uh, it tends to, yeah, it puts the H back on eco and in the daytime AC is off. So if you do this now, okay, no. it's not needed now, but um, it's kind of clumsy to use eco mode in my opinion. So that's why actually even me, where I borrowed this car from, the rental company, they recommend to just use normal mode. So, and since it doesn't, I don't support mode. Okay, let me see. Try to find the normal. Yeah. So, since it doesn't do anything with the, you know, the power distribution, then it doesn't matter for me at least. Uh, okay, it might save a little bit on HVAC, but then you know, I don't want to run only fans. I want to have AC in the daytime. Second loop is done. We also verify we have done around 67 kilometers, and now the consumption has gone up to 213 kilometers. Ideally, we need to loop loop and loop long enough until the consumption doesn't change but that might take too long so we are just uh, gambling for that 100 kilometers the, the loop cycle all right we're done with the test uh, 100.8 kilometer yeah that corresponds with earlier test also and then the consumption was 217 watt hour per kilometer and then uh, I can see here that uh, we have 64.4 percent now we started with 89.8%. So I wrote down everything. I'm gonna crunch the numbers, but let's do the 90 test then. Okay, now I cruise at 93 kilometers per hour. I can finally use auto steer again until I get banned. <laughs> so um, uh, now we, wait, huh, really? Did the consumption drop already? Look at that. So if the uh, rolling cycle was uh, more than 100 kilometers, then uh, it shouldn't uh, fluctuate that much, right? So uh, for all we know, the cycle might be 50 kilometers, but that doesn't matter. As long as our test cycle is longer than the, the car's uh, rolling cycle, then that's good enough. Right, first loop, 192 watt hour per kilometer and dropping. What the heck? Auto stair is gone again. I was looking by the road and there was a building and there was a sign. I was wondering, hey, is that the Do Home? The shop I went with wifey several years ago. And after just five seconds, I heard, doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, no, 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 no. And then I was banned. No soup for you. Come back one year. Like, seriously, how damn strict is this car? You know, it tries to be safe but it ends up being damn annoying. Second cycle, 174 watt hour per kilometer. Wow. 
okay it should be even lower 173 now okay look we have these overpasses many of them and then when we go downhill soon oh, oh, oh it's a bit bumpy and look at the power meter here okay and then it drops to zero wait and then it reduces speed wait but it never went to negative huh is it doing the same thing as the mg it uses friction brake to reduce speed downhill no wonder why the car is so thirsty okay let me try to get myself banned i'm gonna look another way now from now Wow, uh, that was like 10 seconds of not watching the road. It is so random. Because earlier today when I was driving from Bangkok, then I was looking straight ahead, but there was a truck in the left lane, and then I got banned. Okay, the result this time is huh, 100.9 uh, kilometer, not 100.8, probably because of lower temperature and slight change in tire pressure. And then this time we consume 158 watt hour per kilometer and then we are down to 44.6 percent so now we can crunch some numbers all right i've analyzed data now so if you look at the first test the 120 test uh, we consume 25.4 percent and then uh, based on the distance and the consumption reported by the car we consume uh, 21.9 kilowatt hour so that should yield 86 0.1 kilowatt hour net capacity which is unrealistic and then uh, on the second test we consume 19.8 uh, percent and also the equivalent distance versus reported consumption is 15.9 kilowatt hour and that yields 80.5 kilowatt hour this indicates that the state of charge scale is non-linear which is somewhat common in many cars uh, but uh, according to AV database, we have 86 kilowatt hour gross capacity and 83.5 kilowatt hour net capacity. So the average between those two measurements I have is roughly 83 something. So if we were measure a longer uh, test, right, longer loop, if there was actually a trip meter here, we would probably end up with roughly 83.5. So I'm going to use 83.5, and then we see that we have 385 kilometers in the high speed test and actually 528 kilometers in the low speed test that's actually not too bad uh, mainly because we have a big battery it's bigger than the model 3 and actually many other cars that has around 80 kilowatt hour battery but uh, the i would say the lack of efficiency is, is a bit disappointing that the car okay i have to explain when you are in cruise control and you go downhill it will not regen it will use friction brake i've seen this in the mg well it's the previous version of mg but at least the newer generation they have fixed this uh, i think it's like a hardware thing where uh, the chinese car manufacturers they just take a shortcut and they just use friction brake instead of regening i don't know what's up with that but uh, that will then eat up some of the energy instead of going back to the battery so yeah i mean it's still a realistic test because I think many people want to use cruise control and then you just lose that energy but okay overall it's uh i think it's an okay car but the software and the annoying things just kind of you know ticks me off buying this car anyway i think that's gonna be for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later